Hey everybody, we're back for part three of my eight part video series. Today we're gonna to talk about the power systems. And what I mean is, what is the propulsion on your airplane? You know, is it electric, is it gas, is it glow, is it turbine? We're gonna break it all down, so I hope you enjoy it. So let's get right into this. I'm gonna start with gas power. Gas power means you go and buy it from the pump at the gas station, you put it in your gas can, you add the right mixture of oil to it, just like a chainsaw or a, a weed whacker, and you go tear up the sky. So um, gas engines are very well understood because they came from the chainsaw and the weed whacker world. Okay, Two stroke engine means it fires every time it comes up and the spark plug fires. Um, go onto Wikipedia or Google, look up the different difference between two stroke and four stroke and you'll understand that. Um, you have just a fuel tank, ignition system, and engine. It can't get much more simpler than that. Um, um, great for large models because they can get into some serious cubic inches, but they've also gotten them really small nowadays. If they had the small gas engines today, back in the 80s and 90s, um, Man, I, I would have just loved to build a lot of big multi-engine stuff because gas engines are very suited for multi-engine airplanes. They're very reliable. <coughs> Ch uh, fuel's cheap because you're buying gas pump gas. And they're accepted by many people. So that's gas. Let's go to two-stroke. Two-stroke is very well understood because it's been around forever too. But it runs off, it's a glow engine two-stroke. I'm sorry, not a gas engine, but glow. So now we're talking about a glow engine two-stroke. And um, basically, um, they're great for small to mid-sized airplanes. Um, they are more expensive because the fuel is a lot more expensive per gallon. Um, it's got castor oil, I think, and nitro and some other alcohol or whatever. I don't remember what glue the fuel is made out of. doesn't matter. It's messier because the oil mixture in there doesn't burn off like on a two-stroke gas engine. A uh, two-stroke gas engine where your exhaust is, you might take a, a rag and wipe away little bitty drops. On a glow engine, the whole area is going to be smeared in this grease, uh, I mean this oil. It's not really that bad. Take some fantastic, clean off your airplane, take it home. Um, I've always questioned if glow engine two-strokes are good for multi-engine airplanes. They are very finicky on the way that the needle valve is set to lean out the engine. If you don't know your engine, really have it broken in and understand how to run it, borderline rich, I would never use a glow two-stroke on a multi-engine airplane. Now we're gonna talk about glow four-stroke engines. Now, glow four-stroke engines, they're still around. I don't see a lot of people using them, but I loved them when I was younger. In a Piper Cub, a four-stroke glow engine is awesome. <laughs> they don't seem to be anywhere nearly as messy with the oil on your fuselage as a two-stroke glow. They do have, I believe, a little bit more torque because they do turn a bigger uh, propeller. Um, because they're a lower RPM firing on every other stroke versus the two-stroke firing you know, each time the piston comes up. Um, you know, it uh, just sounds a little bit more like a real engine's RPM. But I still argue with people what sounds real. Only a Moki sounds like a real aircraft engine to me. My electric with a 32-14 pitch prop sounds a lot more like a scale engine turning than a gas two-stroke um, 50cc engine. I mean, that sounds like it's just a bumblebee ready to have a heart attack. Um, four strokes are very reliable, okay? Once you understand the needle settings. You know, on a, on a two-stroke glow, you turn that needle valve until it goes wide, wide, wide open and then back it off one click. On a four-stroke, you want to turn it back a little bit more. You don't want it to be really, really lean. I don't know if that's because of pre-detonation or what, but I know it's not good on the engine. Um, like I said, they're suitable for twins or so reliable. Four-strokes are very, very reliable if you know your setup. Um, now we're going to go into diesel power. Many of you may not have known this, but back in the 90s, we could buy a diesel head, put it on your glow engine, and I don't know if it was diesel fuel or what mixture we used, it was so long ago, but the uh, cool thing about it was if I had a 16 ounce tank in my airplane and could fly like 25 minutes on glow, I could get almost an hour of, of the diesel out of that. Um, one thing about the diesel is the head runs really, really hot. I mean, really hot. Any oil that touches it just burns to it, it turns black. Diesel burns really, really hot. Um, turbines. 
Um, I call it type rating, but under the AMA, you need to have an endorsement to fly turbines that show that you've been trained and know how to use them safely. Um, a lot of people consider turbines harder. I don't know if they're really harder. There's just a, there's a learning curve, okay? And you need to know how to do it safely. Um, considered more expensive, which absolutely it is, unless you're putting it against a Moki engine. A Moki engine is about the same as a turbine engine. They're between that two and four thousand dollar range, depending on the setup. Um, and I'm talking only the engine, not the jet. Consider dangerous by many. That's all relative. I have everybody tell me electric's dangerous, and I've gone 14 years without a single battery fire. Um, extremely reliable. If you know how to set up your fuel system on a turbine and you don't have air bubbles, that thing will run until there's an air bubble. Because once that fire is lit in there, it's going to run and as long as it's got fuel and air. Um, it's not used by a lot of people because it's so expensive, but it is starting to, you're starting to see more people fly turbines. Now we're going to talk about electric. I could talk for four hours on this, but I'm just going to hit just the high level stuff, okay? High power to weight ratio. Electric motors have massive torque, will turn big propellers, and that's awesome for scale airplanes. Um, considered a harder to learn by a lot of people. Um, I don't know if that's true for me because I live and breathe and vomit electric now. Um, it's just all second hand to me. If you're getting into electric and you're new, go find a seasoned veteran to spend some time with you and you'll love electric. Um, electric bits gets a bad rap about green. None of us fly electric because we're saving the economy. We fly electric because it's the most reliable power so source you can put in a model airplane. If you size the battery, size the ESC, and size the motor, you will not have dead stick landings. Um, considered more dangerous, AKA burn houses down. Like I said, I have never had a battery fire, but I bought a really good smart charger, a balancing charger. I buy good batteries. If I fly my tra tra plane into a tree and there's nothing left, I don't take that battery out and charge it and put it in my next airplane. I normally will just go ahead and throw that battery away. I'll discharge it in a big bucket full of really high density salt water because that will slowly just take out all the drain and I throw the battery away. Um, but I think a lot of battery fires are because people pile drive their airplanes into trees or you know, goal posts or into a brick building. They throw the airplane away and they take that battery and fly it again. You know, uh, I think that's crazy. Um, extremely reliable, like I said. Awesome for twin engine airplanes. If you're gonna fly a big twin, if you spent two years flying it, building it, stick electric in it. If you know what you're doing with electric, you'll never have an engine failure. <clears throat> it's slowly becoming accepted by everybody electric so. Um, now the guy who's 275 years old that has that Mustang he's never flown, you probably won't be able to convince him to fly electric. Um, but hell, you know. Um, pulse jet. If you don't know what a pulse jet is, the only way I can describe it is go look at the Buzz Bomber from World War II. And basically there's a long tube, there's a valve in the front, there is a glow um, source in it, and there's a fuel source. And basically what happens is, is that you, if I, I've only flown one once. I, re, I think we had a compressed air tank. I don't think we had an air pump. I'm trying, somebody told me you can start one of the air pump. I don't remember, I think we had compressed air. But basically what happened was, is, Air is shot in there, fuel sprays onto the glow thing, it explodes, the valve closes in the front and it shoots all of it out the back, but then as it's traveling out the back, it's shaped right that it then pulls everything with it, which pulls in the new air, the new fuel, that then when it hits that right, right um, saturation point, it explodes again. So it basically sounds like a machine gun shotgun. It is so loud it's deafening, um, but it sounds like, um, well, it sounds almost like an A-10 Warhog gun going off continuously. Um, they're extremely loud, extremely hot. They'll turn red hot. You can see them turn red hot. Um, no throttle. So once you tell your um, spotter to let go of the airplane and you're at the sticks, you're in for the duration of the pulse jet. Um, the year I flew one, we had a big drought, and the entire cornfield in front of me was dry soybean. And I was scared if I crashed in it, I would end up burning like a whole county. Um, but the airplane flew until it ran out of gas really fast. They're really, really fast. And it landed and it was uneventful and I never flew it again. <clears throat> the next thing I'm going to talk about is high start. So you're thinking, a high start? What's a high start? If you're a glider guy, you know what a high start is. Or a gal. 
A high start is a rubber band that is on the ground. You usually have a certain amount of rubber band, then a certain amount of string, then a little parachute. You hook it to your airplane. You drag it back uh, 50 yards. It, like a slingshot, launches your airplane into the air. The little ring falls off. The parachute keeps everything falling slow, and you fly around and try to find a thermal. That's a high start. I started in model aviation with rubber powered, then control line, but then the moment I went to RC, I went to gliders. And the first three to four years I flew was gliders, and it was so inexpensive. As long as I didn't crash my airplane, all I had to do was charge my batteries, and my high start would launch me. Some clubs hate high starts. You shouldn't belong to that club, because the bottom line is there's more people out there in the way than you are with your glider. I had a club one time said, well, you can't have a high start here. What if I run across it with my wheels? The high start's not near the runway. It's, it's off the side of the field. You're going to land on the runway, but I'm not going to get into why I hate some clubs. Um, <clears throat> winch toe. I had a friend call me up one time and says, Damon, I got this massive glider, too big for a high start. I need a winch. Can you help me design a winch? So we got a starter, I think it was from a Volkswagen Bug. We welded a drum and we put a clutch on it from a mini bike. So the electric motor would spin up and start to grab the winch and then start pulling it slowly and then start moving it. And that's how we got his airplane in the air. We had, I believe, 50 yards of eighth inch aircraft cable on it. And it would launch his 25 pound glider into the air and he'd go off and try to find thermals. We had a foot pedal so we could hook it all up with a 12 volt battery. We could get many launches off that 12 volt battery. And that's what a tow launch is. <clears throat> now we're going to talk about something that I know I'll get some hate mail, and that's fine. It is rocket launched RC. Back in the 90s, there was actually a company selling them, and everybody flocked to it, and it just died. Because every time you launch it, you have to buy a rocket motor, and they're not cheap. So if you're like me, I can fly the whole day off my generator with a gallon of gas, um, my electrics, because I'm just charging batteries all day. But these rocket, rocket launch ones, to me, if it floats your boat, awesome. Are they really cool? Yes, they have that wow factor. But if that's all you're going to fly, you're going to be spending a lot of money on rocket engines. And I mean a lot. Um, I actually built one a long, long time ago. We took one of my Estes rockets and put like a hand glider kite on it that was rubber um, activated. And we had a, uh, a key ring that was where my rocket engine was hooked to two little loops. So when the rocket engine backfired and fell out of the back of the rocket, the ring would release and my kite would come out and I had just one channel for rudder and we would glide it around. But after you know using six, uh, what was it, C65s or whatever the rocket engine was, we realized this is really expensive to, for RC. Then you have rocket powered air launch. Um, chances are you're not gonna spend the whole day doing this, but let's say you have an X-1 or an X-15. You're gonna ride up on a mothership, get dropped, pitch up, fire the rocket engine, climb up to almost out of sight where you can't see it and then glide around and land it. It's really neat, it's neat and nostalgic, it's just not very economical. So that's my video, everybody. This wasn't going to be a long one. I just wanted to cover all the power systems that I have personally seen. I had somebody tell me one time that there was a steam powered, never seen it, don't even know how the hell that would work in RC. And there was another guy who was telling me about, you know, using electric with solar collectors. Great, I understand it, but that's got to be one big ass airplane to be able to lift enough solar cells to actually get enough amperage and watts to keep the thing in the air. I know it's possible, but nothing I've ever done. I may have missed a power source, and if I have, send me an email or make a comment on YouTube, uh, and I'll add it to my next video. But that's pretty much it, everybody. Now, for me, I started um, with powered aircraft in Glow, and it was control line. Moved into a um, Eagle II, then a Sky Tiger, then I went to a Sig Cougar, and from there on, I was flying uh, Glow engines all the way up until I got my Oh, my big Zeroli Corsair, which I had like a oh, something 40, quarter 42 or something in it. Um, and then I went back to Glow Forever, 
And then I got me a 3W150 for my 50% pits. And I had a blast for three years with that. And then I got into electric and um, actually gave that 3W150 to a young kid who had a really neat airplane, but he was having really hard fi times finding funds for that big uh, 150 cc engine. So I thought, what the heck, I'm in electric now and I just gave him the engine. <laughs> so uh, you might want to stay friends with me one day I'll give away all my stuff. So um, everybody have an awesome day. I hope you're finding these videos informative. I'm just trying to have fun and share all my knowledge because I keep getting all these emails like, Damon, you gotta share everything you've ever done. The next video is gonna be on your radio and if you're crashing, it's your fault because I've gone um, since like 1987 without a radio glitch that crashed me. Um, and the video after that is going to be on um, setting up your aircraft for uneventful flights. And yes, I'm going to tackle the center gravity, your trims and exponentials, and um, probably tell you that an awful lot of you are doing it wrong. Um, so I just hope you have an open mind. So rock on everybody, and I'll see you in the next video. Be safe.